Yes. Well, we're excited. The, the band's back together. Welcome, welcome Hello. to Friday. This is our Thursday night portion. This is so much fun. It's going to be fun, it. you guys. It's going to be fun from now on, on Thursday nights. Actually, if you guys loved uh, hearing Jen and Robin, so th big thanks, shout out to Jen and Robin uh, last week who covered for us. And then the week before we had Deborah had her round table around the kitchen. Isn't that fun? It's super fun to have like new people, I think doing the thing. So yeah. we really appreciate them. Really it's going to be fun from now on, on the Thursday nights, uh, this Thursday night portion, Robin and Jen are actually going to pinch hit for us on these Thursday nights gives us a week off. Um, for those of you not in the Ruta cafe, you'll, you, you, then you may not know Brenda and I are on all the time over there doing whether some call or something. So it's kind of nice for us to have uh, a night off, but, um, it's going to be fun. Um, you can catch Brenda or myself also in our office hours and we'll start posting mm -hmm. those. So you can, you can right. meet up with us. We'll just have the doors open for a couple hours every week. And you can do that. I'm just going to go through, I, uh, like I said, Brenda and I are both at our kid's house. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry in advance. If you hear screaming and yelling in the <laughs> background with their little, it's a five and three-year-old. Let's be honest. It's, it's not our grown ups who are making the noise. Um, <laughs> so awesome. But, uh, uh, that's why I'm using my daughter's like set up here because uh, I actually gave this to her. So you can't, hopefully can't hear them in the background, but uh, I'm, I'm, it's all good. I'm reading my notes from my phone y'all. So I have some notes to go over. First of all, Brenda, what a great conference. Yeah. Did we have an amazing conference this past weekend? Oh my gosh. Yeah. It was amazing. Ever. It Best was amazing. Ever. There's a few of you are here. Yeah. I see, uh, I'm on my laptop, so I'm squinting. I see Misty. Misty was there. Uh, Carol was there. I don't know if Carol's on here um, today, but Carol was in there with us. We had some, such a great time. What a, so much healing happened. It, was, so it wasn't much. a lot. We did a lot of healing and, and, uh, it was just, and the fellowship was amazing. Yeah. January. Uh, they said they're going to be opening registration for next year. That's how soon they're going to start registration for next year because they're anticipating that it's going to sell out. So as soon as they tell us, we'll tell you again, it's not our event, but we do want to spawn. We do want to, uh, support encourage them that. Yes, and absolutely. encourage them. And it was mm -hmm. amazing. And yeah. I had a blast, Brenda, thank you for sharing your heart with us. That was amazing. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, yes, too. And you sang, you sang, yeah. oh, you first sang. time in 14 years, first time in 14 <laughs> years. God is you good. Sang. God is good. It was amazing. I mean, that was fun. Like he wouldn't let me practice. And um, because he kept telling me, you're not performing, you're not performing. I'm like, but I haven't done this in 14 years. And, and I have like this whole, like my whole story, you know, I can't, couldn't sing, couldn't talk, had that laryngeal nerve cut, vocal cords cut. And he showed up. It was good. It was good. So I, it was I, beautiful. Um, yeah. What else do I have? It? Uh, yeah. And if you guys, um, some of you that are on here and you're like, I really would like to listen to the portion, mm -hmm. listen to it read. You can go mm -hmm. to uh, uh, the Rooted Cafe, K A F E dot com, and then forward slash the dash portion. Okay. Or just go to the Rooted Cafe dot com, and up at the top, it says the portion. You can click on that. Right, right when you open that, I've changed it around so you don't have to scroll at all. It's like right there. It says, Do you want to listen? And you know what? This week was so great. Pietra, please. I know she's not on here because she's in South Africa, but she did our reading. We've asked uh, Misty. This is her project. Thank you, Misty, for, for thank you, Misty. Up. But it has been so fun to listen to different people reading. It has been amazing to listen to you reading the portion. Um, uh, I had Marion, uh, uh, Miriam uh, Stallsworth. She did the uh, her portion when I was there. We did her recording. It was so great. I just sat there listening. I thought, I love this. You know, I love hearing the word. Like Me we too. see it, we listen, um, yeah. we read it. And it's so yeah. good at like all your senses are involved and it's just good. It's good. It is good. So, uh, I love hearing the different voices and I yes. love being able to hear, you know, just, it's just fabulous. And you know, ladies, you can listen to that in your car yeah. you to that when you're doing your dishes, you can listen to that, put your headphones on while you're vacuuming. It's a great way to have the word penetrate your mind and your spirit, and also to connect with your sisters because, you know, yeah. And would you do me a favor as you're listening us. to whoever, whoever is like, whoever's reading, Speaking would you pray for them? Mm -hmm. 
Would you yeah. pray for them as you're listening to them? And you could welcome to share that with anyone. That's free. That's it's on our, on the, the just our regular web page. It's not yeah. in our private member site. So anyone can listen to that. So we, we, we love you all for that. Also, what's new? Yay. Finally, I finally got books back up in the store. Finally got the store back going. So all those links pretty much take you over to, with the exception of our cookbook, um, they take you over to our, the, the, to Amazon and it is connected to us. It is an affiliate link. I need to let you guys know that we get like four cents for everything, each yeah. thing you buy, but Hey, all those little four cents is add up and yes, help us do. pay for things like zoom and things that, um, like <laughs> the gospel's free, but giving, sending it to the nations is not. So we really appreciate using our links and we love you for that. Um, but gosh, Vaishlak, let's do this, right? Vaishlak. Oh my gosh. This is such an amazing. We're, we're in Genesis portion. 32, four. Is that- this is going four? fast, Charlie. It's this going is going fast. really fast. It's going too fast. We're almost out of Genesis. I'm, I'm like, slow down. Wait, I'm not ready. I'm not ready Wait. to get to Egypt yet. I'm not ready. So <laughs> everyone breathe. <sighs> okay. Vaishlak. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that cool? This is, this yeah. is a part, I'm just going to, let's just do a quick overview. It's, just, it's, yeah, a let's bit do long, an overview. it's long to read, but we have, we have Jacob, um, Jacob preparing to, to meet Esau. Then we have mm-hmm. Jacob wrestling with maybe God, maybe we don't know, but it's maybe God. an angel, maybe, maybe, maybe an, angel, an angel, you know, well, Jacob well. meets, Jacob meets Esau. Yeah. Uh, and then we see Dina defiled in Shechem. Mm. Then we see the rededication at Beth El. We see wow. Rachel's death. We see Rachel's death at, in childbirth, right? And mm-hmm. then we see uh, we see um, Jacob returning or Israel returning to Isaac. We see Esau talking about him fathering the Edomites, which is kind of interesting. I kind of got stuck on that today, which we'll nerd out on that a little bit later. But okay. can I have to, before we get started, Brenda, I don't know <laughs> what is the deal, but I was reading it as we're in 35 and I'm like, do, 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 Isaac return. Israel returns to Isaac that I'm reading. Then Jacob came to his father, Isaac at mom. I'm like, what do you mean he came to his father? Isn't he dead already? Like, what do you mean he came to his father? I mean, this only goes to show, like, I don't know if I was, I, I think I taught this at bed, bed on me, but I believe that when, when they came to, to uh, Isaac, when they were at his bed and when the whole, all that happened with, with Jacob and his mom, I really believe that it was his, that his mom was really covering the, his father. Cause I think that Isaac had lost his vision more. So what he had lost is he had lost the vision of, he'd lost the vision of what the call, what was called, what God had called God had prophesied already right? He had already prophesied to Rebecca and he had said, listen, Rivka, you are going to have two nations warring in your womb. you the younger yes. will serve the older. And all she was doing, I don't know if she was trying to help things along, but I really encourage you to stay, take a step back instead of thinking that, that Jacob was a swindler and a conniver. Instead of seeing him, his name means to come from behind. He was someone who could be like the long shot horse, right? He's coming from behind and then he comes around the track and whoa, right. look, here he comes in the lead. <laughs> like that's, that's who Jacob was is he was the guy, like the underdog, who's going to make it no matter what. And don't we see this happening through the whole character of him? Not necessarily that he was a swindler, but we see him that he keeps he was the one who came from behind and he's, he comes and he's constantly, he's going to make it no matter what he's going to make it no matter what. And when it said that Isaac's, his eyes were growing dim. I'm just really, I don't know why it hit me this year that it was more than his vision. Like his vision was growing dim because look at him. He's still living. He lives to 180 years and he lives like, I don't know, Kim, you're on here. You're our resident. Like you can type in here in the chat and let me know, but I've looked at different places. And they've said he's lived anywhere. He was right around maybe a hundred years old when that happened. Did it really? I'm like, I don't know about that, but he, we know at least it's 20 or more years, minimum of 20 years <clears throat> since that happened could have been 80. So 20 to 80 years, he's still going. So he wasn't in the bed going, I'm going to die. I'm coming Elizabeth. Like that's not what was happening. And I don't know why <laughs> Brenda, when I read this, I mean, this is the end of, of our Parsha, but I read that I was like, why did it just skip my mind that he's still living? Yeah. And then he had... Right. Right. I don't know. That was just random. Well, I, and he's, but I think that because we really, because he, it's almost like he disappears, right? Like we're not hearing from him. We're not hearing about him. We're not, but, but the cool thing is that 
Jacob is on his way. Yeah. Yeah. After all this time, he, he missed his mom. I mean, we're going to get into that. You know, he's, he, he, his, his nursemaid dies, his mother dies. Yeah. And then his father dies. This is, you know, this is, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. Lot going we, on. See, we see Jacob going through, he goes through major changes and then he gets a new name, like major changes oh happen gosh. and he gets a new name. Like yeah. it's not just any name. It's like a big, no. like a, like a, like it's the name we still talk about. Like, oh, oh, where are you going to Israel? Like, hello. It's the name yeah. we use. Like, oh, it's I'm in gonna- a prophetic mantle. It's the prophetic mantle of the nation yeah. it is, it is, it's everything. Charlie, this is such a prophetic Parsha. Yes. Um, can I just, you know, this is the eighth Parsha. That just took me out right there. I mean, oh, please. In that for a minute. Ladies, this is the eighth Parsha. And you remember what the number eight means? It's new beginnings. Brenda. Letting go of the back. It's it. letting go. I know, right? I know. Been- I'm, Brenda, that's why we talk. I was like, why the heck is this whole circumcision in this? Because it's the eighth Parsha. Is On the exactly. eighth day is when the circumcision would happen. Because once they've made it through the seven days, it's time to circumcise. It's time to move into. No wonder we talk about yeah. circumcision in right. this Parsha. Yeah. Wow. And okay. it's a letting go. It's a refocus. It is so powerful, Ruth. You're right. It's refocusing our attention on what's really important. Ladies, we are being challenged in this Parsha. Here we go. I'm going to preach. Preach. Do it, sister. Challenged in this Parsha right here and right now to choose what are we going to do? How are we going to live our lives? Are we going to embrace the call of God on our lives? Or are we going to just feed our beast nature? We have that choice. It's choose you today who you will serve. Are you yeah. going to be an Israel? Or are you going to be an Esau? Yeah. Now listen. Through the whole thing. This is through the entire thing. It is choice after choice after choice. It is leaving behind. This whole thing when Jacob is 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 confronted with the with the angel, right? What with that angel and gosh, have we gotten so much? <laughs> we've different opinions about what that's I, all like Brenda about, and right? I study. We were going back and forth this we week. We were laughing. We were laughing because we're reading midrash <laughs> after midrash. You know, we're kind of <laughs> going off the off the deep end in some areas. It's like I think the one a I really like right now, there. a lot of opinions, a lot of thoughts. I think and some of it is, is like, you could read like in the Apocrypha. Some of you oh, can eat in other books. Yeah, the, yeah. the one I'm kind of sticking to Brenda is that mm-hmm. he was, he was wrestling with Esau's guardian angel, you know, and that is, that, that is a distinct possibility that that's, that it that could be, was, or was it God? Know? We don't know. It just says, we, ish. He, the, it, it the said, Hebrew it, just says, ish. so it was exactly. a, a man. So we don't know. Or God, he was wrestling with himself. Could he? Have, who could he have been could wrestling he with? Have been... I mean, was he just wrestling with himself? Because after I would have done a different, as I, if I knew I was about to go meet, like my sister and I are estranged. Oh my friend. gosh, I know. So if I knew that, I and, and I didn't do anything wrong to her. There was not well, and I've tried to apologize for what she think what happened. It was not anything like this, but um, it was. She thinks I'm in a cult. So um, and then if <laughs> if um, I was to meet her. I'm really glad that I'm in a really good place, but just say, yeah. I was trying to put myself, that's what right. this, you know, we want to walk this out with you, right? How do we right. put yourself in their shoes? Applicable. I write down, I have all these this questions like, what the heck, what does this mean? Who's, is he struggling with his conscious? <laughs> like, is he struggling? And I mean, it talks yeah. about the dust. Remember Bren, what it's the, yeah. uh, right. um, the, uh, Yavak is when it's talking about how he struggled. It says that he, he Yavaked. the root is Avak, which is dust. So he's struggling. Hmm. Yep. What? Like he's being he's, pounded into the dust. Being, being pounded into the, the struggle. Dust. This this is not a this is not a this is not a oh stop it oh let me go. This is like a, to the death type of struggle. This is being pounded into the dust. This is mm. a wrestling match. This is a wrestling match. Yeah. Uh, and this whole thing with the dust, I love it. And what's being, I love your take on that, Charlie. You're taking that as if he's being pounded back into the dust from whence he came. I mean, it's a return, right? It's a return to what? It's a return to come back to a new beginning. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's to finish what is and to start again, right? And Absolutely. Another imagery. I love that, Charlie. Another imagery of new beginnings. Exactly. Like you can't get there from here the way that you are. <laughs> I, wrote, I wrote down a, a, this, uh, I was reading this uh, excerpt from her name is Rabbi Judith Siegel. And she says, oh. when, when we feel fear of something greater than our humanity and more powerful we are then aware of our mortality and limitations. Only then can we move into gratitude. And it just hit me because it was like, when I, when you get to the end of yourself, isn't that when you can really be grateful? We talked about, when we talk about that, we're going to talk about this when we get into Leviticus, when your first thing we have to do is give up our will, right? And it has to be burnt to nothing. It has to be burned into ash. Oh wait, into the dust. And isn't that what we're seeing with Jacob? Yes. Yes. Aren't we seeing that he has to give up as well? Charlie, this, this hit me so hard. We have, you and I have not talked about this part, but Mm -mm. I mean, just like Leviticus, it was like, this is, he has to give up his will. If he's going to go forward, he has to come to the end of himself. And was it, was it an angel? Was it God? Was it Messiah? Was it his brother's angel? Was it him, him himself? Hmm, Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yes. The answer is yes. Yes. Was it all the things? Maybe. <laughs> because look at, I mean, look what's happening. I've you had to do that. I've to had to do sh- himself. Yes. I've had to struggle with me. Like I, I can tell you that I've had to struggle and, and sometimes we think, oh, it's just, I have to struggle with my pride and, but you know what? Sometimes we have to struggle with hurt offenses. Yeah. Um, I mean, we bring this up the beta Satan. I don't, I'm scared because I probably should reread that book before I bring it back up again. But back yeah, in the day, might, yeah, I probably should reread that before I recommend that. it. But I, I just remember the picture of like the guy on the front cover of it, like with his foot caught in a bear trap, because truly a fence will keep you trapped. Absolutely. So that's 100%. why we have a fellowship offering. We're going to talk about that, yeah. which if it keeps us trapped, it's yeah. going to keep us from going into his presence. But that's what's going to happen here. See, Jacob can't be Israel until he gives up his will. He can't be Israel until he gives up. He has to give up his will. He's going to have to give up his ability to provide because he's going to have to send all his possessions ahead. He's going to have to give up. Look at the things. If we walk this, he's walking all this out. He's sending everything. He's saying, I got to give this all up and to make this right. He can't be who he's called to be. And I feel like there's a struggle continually. And why I say that is because look at when Abraham, when Abram was, was his name was changed to Abraham we're told to never call him Abraham again, right? Abram, right. We're never to we call never, him Abram again. We never call right. him Abram again. So do we right. ever say Abram? No, no, we never do. Have I ever even called, did I even know that was his name? Probably not until I was older. We don't say Abram. We always say Abraham. Now, how many times do we say Jacob? His name has changed, but do you know, you'll notice the interchangeable. And I want you yes. to look at that when you're listening to it as Pietra's reading yes. it to you, or you're reading it. Yeah. I want you to notice when is he called Jacob? Yeah. And when is he called Israel? Right. It's sick. What's that about? Yeah. This is the Torah guys. There's no wasted words. So that is another one of those things. Circle it, write it in your book. Hmm. Wonder yeah. why. Yeah. And then, and then at the end of the last Parsha, because you know, these were just kind of, these Parshas were put into place just to help us read. Right. Um, at the end of the last Parsha 32, we see in verse 32, um, one early in the morning, Laban got up, kissed his grandchildren, daughters blessed. Then Laban left and returned to his, his palace. Levon will back and I'll give you both names. Right, right. While Yaakov left on his way, the angels of God met him. Yeah. Then Jacob said, when he saw them, this is God's camp. And he named this place Mahani, Mahanaim. And then we go straight into if we were going to keep reading, because it's all the same, really the same area. He, we keep reading. And then Jacob sent messengers before him to his brother's Esau. Well, let me just tell you that let right. that word is Malak. Yeah. H4397 for you nerders who want to yeah. look that up in your strongs. Right. And guess what? It's the same word in verse four when it says, from those messengers or the angels that came were Malak, the Malak came. Right. And then yeah. in verse four, and then he sent messengers, Malak. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? What's, what's interesting is that that there there remember that when that when Jacob was at Bethel before, and the heavens opened up and the ladder came down and the angels were ascending. Okay, think about it. They were ascending and descending. They weren't descending and ascending. They were ascending, which meant that they were there already, right? 
they were there going up <laughs> and then there was others coming down well the tradition says that they were the angels of the land that protect the Eretz Israel they protect the land and they don't this is what they do so this when you when you were and I were talking about this earlier, it hit me that these are that that's them. He ran into them. They were there. And of course, he sent them ahead. They had a job to do. They were protecting the land and protect. Who else were they protecting? Israel, mm -hmm. which was because it, because Benjamin hadn't been and had Benjamin been born yet by that. No, time? no, ben, no. The, the entire the entirety of the the heads of the nations have not even been born yet they were babes they were children well we always know that is the clue when you hear god when he when adonai tells someone in when he's speaking to them he says now be fruitful and multiply you know there's another kid coming <laughs> or several <laughs> there's always more children coming that person uh, the only person right. that's not the case with is noah yeah. and we talked about that that's why we yeah we'll look back but anyway Go back and listen to that and you'll see my crazy talk on that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I just caught that and I was sitting in that um, today. I was like, oh, he sent messengers. Well, the messengers were yes. they angels. These were angels yeah. Yeah. and he sent them ahead because who else is with him? Like he had to put a bunch of women and children. His kids weren't very old. Right. If you think about it, they weren't more than 14 because yeah. they couldn't have been, <laughs> they couldn't have been if you look at who had babies, we have to wait, go back and look. It had to maybe 13, 12, because he was 14 years working total, right? It probably had to be at least nine months last time I counted to take, to have a baby. So we're talking 12, 13, or 13, 14, not even 14 year old jets. These kids that are coming with him. Did he have manservants? I don't know. I wasn't there. So another interesting thing, can we just get, this is me now. Now you guys are in for it the rest of this whole Torah, because this year it's all about me asking questions. Where right. the heck was Dina? Dina is not mentioned anywhere. Mm -hmm. she, the boys no. were sent ahead. They divide the camps up and it's, they name mm -hmm. everybody and they send every, the only person not mentioned is Dina. It, exactly. exactly. Kim. Yes, Kim. <laughs> oh, she already knew. I should have known. She was, that's what tradition, I mean, it was secret. says that, that Dina was actually placed in a box because Thea yeah. was, was, be, was supposed to marry Esau. And that's one of the reasons they say her eyes were, her eyes were dim. It wasn't that it was because mm -hmm. she, it was not well, long story. That's an idiom for her not being attractive, but it's also, she was supposed to have married uh, Esau, but because now Jacob came as the, he is now the, uh, he's now coming as the firstborn that's, he's taken that position on. So now he's supposed to marry the firstborn. Like that's the right order, you know? So he's hiding. They, he hit, actually hid Dina from it because he didn't want his brother to get her and marry her right right yep yep he will be restored well this thing yeah exactly hidden from the eyes of esau because jacob is afraid he'll be restored exactly mm -hmm. that's pretty deep there's a lot that goes into that but there's a lot Leo, it was meant it was it's thought that leah was supposed to bring redemption to esau right and because jacob had her now that didn't happen so now dina was to bring redemption and she who was, was leah's daughter who was leah's daughter Right. Right. So that's mm -hmm. why later we, th we see it's we go through that. He actually, she remarries Job, who's actually a descendant of Esau. And there you go. That's I'll let you dig that one out. And there's all kinds of other possibilities out there. Ooh, it gets deep. It gets interesting. <laughs> we got some interesting stuff. Okay. So the other thing in verse 11, my question, Brenda, I'm just going to ask mm -hmm. questions. Today's your questions, guys. Oh my gosh. I have so many questions. You have questions. Can we, just, can you guys answer? We don't know. Can you answer? We don't know. I'm glad Kim's, I'm on, so here. Glad Kim's on here. <laughs> verse 11 with, with my staff, I crossed the Jordan. What the, what? What do you mean with your staff? You cross the Jordan. When did he put that in there? Does that mean he put the staff down? Like when Moses did and, and cross the Jordan I mean, he, did he put his staff down and it opened up for him and they walked across it? Is that what that means? I don't know. Do you know, does anyone know? Because I well, just read that today. It was like, or this is the first this, it, with, and with, and, and with only my staff, I crossed over. Well, remember that when, remember that when he went to Levon, he had nothing. He had zero because he had left. Okay. Nothing. Right. Right. So right, right. all he had, all he had was maybe was his staff. He had nothing. Yeah. 
And he, he wasn't supposed to be able to go get a bride because you have to have, you have to, you have to prove to the family that you can provide for your, your bride. You can't just go get a good bride. Can I, can I go on a limb? I'm going to go on a limb. There is a midrash that says that Esau's son came after to vindicate him and that actually Jacob gave him all of his things and said, I'm just, you know, don't kill. Here's all the, here's all the stuff that I was going to get a bride with. And because I'm as good as dead, if I'm poor, so here you go, I have nothing. And now I've given it all up. Yeah. 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 Kim says, here's my wealth. Go away. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Here, here, be wealthy. Go away. Exactly. Uh, she's, I like what you said, Kim. She said, Jacob's wrestling with the angel of the spirit of Esau because it's the flesh of his twin self, the physical versus the spiritual. Yes. Do you know, don't we all do Add it? that to the yeses. Add that to the yes pile. <laughs> we could be on this for a long time because I mean, I mean truly, we hear Paul, oh, why do I do the things I don't do? Why do I do the things I'm not supposed to do? Why am I constantly wrestling with my flesh? Like we're, we're wrestling with our beast. We're Simi. Simi needs to be on here. Why am I wrestling with my beast self? Because we were, we were created on the same day, day six, we were mm-hmm. beasts and man, we were created the right. same day. So it's going to be a thing. Isn't it is interesting. We, we wrestle with a, uh, we wrestled with a beast who tells us, are you sure that's what he said? I mean, we, there was a wrestling. So I think that we're, yeah. we're constantly being drawn back to the garden and, and seeing that picture through all of this. Again, new beginnings, again, being behind, we are being challenged like never before in this Parsha, we are being challenged the eighth Parsha to leave behind, to choose where and what we're going to do to choose. Are we going to walk in his ways? Are we going to choose to walk in his ways? It, it's going to take, there's a price that's involved. Yeah. yeah. Are you willing to pay the price. Are you willing to let go of your nature? Are you willing to let go of your will? Are you willing? Are you willing to choose? Because choose you this day whom you will serve. I have brought before you life and death choose this day. I mean, think about all the choices that were being asked. The same thing, it's choosing life. And it is also choosing newness of life. Yeah. We're leaving behind. He wrestled with the thing that was, that was, that was holding him back. You guys, doesn't that ring true to your spirit? Are you wrestling with the things that are holding you back? Good for you. Brava. Or your destiny. Are you wrestling with your destiny? Because the things that are keeping you, just holding you back from what you're called to be and who you're called to be. And until you finally get the limp, right? I mean, I think about what did Paul talk about? Come to the end. On his side. Like you have to come to the end to where come you- Come to the end of yourself. You better yeah. come out limping. Like, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm- I mean, I feel like it. I mean, I know that my life, if if you were there this weekend, you know, I mean, I can, I poured it all out there. And I mean, I came out limping, like I was limping because when at the end of my, when I came to the end of myself, it's like, I, 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 you're, you're limping, but you know what the limp is? The limp is a humility. It's not a disability. It's a humility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. That's good. Someone write that one down. Write that one. That's a quotable quote. I'm writing that quote. Yeah. Not a disability. It's humility. Yes. And I love that so much. I, I yeah. just, this Parsha is just kind it's of full up. It's this Parsha guys. I don't know if, how you, how you felt reading through it this week, but didn't it kind of hit you in soft spaces? Like, didn't it hit you in soft, in the soft part of your heart? Like make you think about things like, you know, we're going to be talking about Dina. Yeah. It hit, it hits you. It hits you. You know, what hit me for hit for me for Esau too, is, is is he was, I've I've been looking things different. I know we, you and I talk about this a lot, but I've been, I've been looking at things really different lately. And it's been like in in the Parsha, I mean, I've been looking at it from a different, I feel like I turned my Bible upside down this year and I've been looking at it differently. Cause I'm, I'm like, I'm going to look at this, asking questions chunk by chunk and what's here and what's missing. What's not here. Why did, why was this missing? And one of the things I'm thinking about for Esau is why what the gifts he sent so many stuff because we think about Esau Esau was a man of the flesh yeah. Esau was a man who the gifts he knew would appease him 
that he, he sent him things that would appease his flesh. And so that's what they went out. And, and a lot of people who are thinking, I, I mean, I'm kind of a fan of, I'm a fan of Jacob this year. I'm, I'm not in the camp that he was a deceiver and, or that he did all these things wrong. I really am in his camp that he just really is the guy who is like, he's the underdog and he's coming from yes. behind and he had a call in his life and it, he had to work hard for it. Like it didn't come easy to him and he had to struggle with himself. He had to struggle with it was just hard, you know, with choices and what people, you know, I really saw myself this like, wow, you know, I tried to do all the right things and it all the wrong, you know, and you still, as hard as you try, you still get kicked down and you still got to get, you know, we got to do, get back up. And right. I'm, I saw that this year in him and I'm seeing Esau, the, the flesh of that, like the choices that like, wow, how it appeased him. And I don't see that Jacob sent you know, before I thought, oh, how, how is Leah supposed to feel that she was sent out in front of Rachel? So once again, she's told you're not worthy, but that's not really it. I realized that, you know what? That's not the case. She had more kids. She had more people to protect her and all, and all that Rachel had was Joseph and he was a kid, like little kid. Yeah. So of course she was behind because she didn't have all the other, she didn't have the boys all around her to help protect. So that's why she was last. Of course she was the favorite. Of course that had something to do with it but she didn't have as much to protect her. And then I saw, I saw this year, I don't know where I was all these years that he ran ahead of everyone. Jacob ran ahead yeah. of everyone and met him. First. Right. That he hit didn't me make again them this go year first. Too. He did. Yeah. He, I just really yeah. am in the, I'm in the, I'm in Jacob's camp this year. Like I'm rooting <laughs> for Jacob. I really am. I'm like, go yeah. Jacob. Right. And I really see myself in Jacob a lot. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And Rachel was pregnant. Exactly. Yes. Lori. And she was pregnant. Yeah. 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 And that was that. I mean, that was so great because when Esau says, come on, let's, you know, let's, oh, go, let's go there. But I'm like, and he's like, mm, well, you no, know, the kids yeah, you know are what? little, the animals yeah. or we're kind of so he didn't have a bunch of guys. Like you guys, he wasn't, he was by himself. Like he just had a bunch of little kids and I love Brenda. Can you imagine? He's like, uh, yeah. how about you guys come with us? And he's like, okay, a bunch of hit tight wives and bunch of crazy. Mm, I know very carnal, like very beast, like mindset. Beast. He knows his brother. He knows the wives. He knows the shenanigans. He knows all the things happening. We are going to see later. I mean, I recommend, I wrote them all out for myself and started studying out the, tr the tribal leaders that, that came out of Esau, all the tribes that he was birthed. So he's got these sons. He's like, do I really want to subject my family to that? So he's like, no, 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 you guys go ahead. We'll catch up. We'll be right there. You know, oh. and how many times have I had, like, we have to make decisions. Like we just, we, there's camps, we, and we're going to see this with Dina. There's camps. You just cannot go into there's, there's people you can't follow. Even sometimes we have to let go of our family members. We saw Yeshua do it. He says, well, who's my family? Like he had to look around and go, this isn't going right. to, this is not our best. Yes. Right now. We need to go. We need to go in a different direction because this is not where God's calling us to go. Does He say that? No. But I, we know the shenanigans Esau gets into. We know what happens, and He just doesn't want. He doesn't want to subject his daughters to to be part of that as well. Yeah. There's, there's, there are. So what we're learning, another thing that we're learning when we're taking this and applying it to our lives, is that is that guess what? We, there are places that we need to stay out of. Yeah. Stay away, stay out of them. It, it, you are not going to have, you are, that is not where you need to be. No. Right. Not at all. Well, you, you had mentioned about the talk, you want to talk about the way that Jacob ends up approaching Esau before we move past that. Um, you're talking about him bowing seven times, seven times. Okay. So bowing seven times, it was, it's so neat because in the, in the ancient near East bowing seven times was what a, a, a vassal did to a King or a lower King did to a higher King. In other words, what he was doing that bowing seven times, he was making sure that everyone, especially Esau, because he was appealing to Esau, you know, he was probably appealing to, to that part of Esau that he knew he could, but he was bowing because he was saying that I, I am giving up everything. You're here, take my wealth. You can have everything. Take my wealth. I'm bowing at your feet. You, you are the greater one here. He was giving homage, okay? He wasn't worshiping him, but he was saying, you know, you're greater than I am. 
that's what the whole seven times bowing was all about. He was bowing, but, and we can laugh and joke and say, well, maybe he was shaking in his <laughs> terrified, probably so, yes. So he was, he said he was scared. I mean, it was not a joke. Like here's 400 men who he had a bunch of women and children. That's really? To, pro- to protect him. Yeah. It was with the animals. It was like those animals, they represent so in in the ancient near east it those and giving those animals that is what you paid when you were paying homage to a king Mm -hmm. but you did somebody who's way 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 greater than you that's what that was and i just love that because what we were learning is that jacob had to give up his will right yeah it wasn't coming back full of himself he was coming back humble yeah and he was giving because us, he, he had to be humble provision. in order to be Israel. I don't, and I think that he really was trying to make things right. Yes, he I was. Really do. Yes, yes, I agree too. And 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 I agree with you, Charlie. I don't think that he was being he wasn't being sneaky about it. He was actually trying to. He was being wise. I think that God gave him heavenly strategies. I think that those messengers maybe even helped him with that. I, I think that there was heavenly strategies downloaded to him and that what he was doing was exactly what needed to be done because what we see in this story, which we may not have ever noticed before, is that it does appease the, the flesh. It, it does appease Esau's flesh. Yeah, exactly. And, and Esau comes running to, Esau's overwhelmed. He runs to him, you know, kisses him. And then he says, oh, come on, come in and live with me. Well, wait a minute now. What did, what did, what, what was Rebecca willing to do? What, what was she, what was she willing to do? Anything that it took for her to see the fulfillment of the word of God for the nations, right? We see Rahab do that. We see Rahab do that. Anything that it, whatever it requires. And that's what she did with Jacob, whatever it required. Mm -hmm. Here again, we see Jacob doing what it requires in order for him to not be sucked into the, um, um, he had to, he had to maintain being set apart. He had to maintain being separate. He had to maintain the holiness. Yeah. But even in that, again, you know, they're human. So even in that we, we have tragedy. However, yeah. he did, he did maintain the separateness. And he did it wisely and he did it in a way that did not cause a war. Yeah. A couple, couple things. Kim just says 400. Oh, I have to go back up on these things. She says 400 men, 400 years in Egypt, 400 shekels for the, the Hebron, the cave in Hebron. I mean, that's put that on your things to study out guys. That's a really good thing. And Laura, you said she never understood why Esau accused him of stealing since it seemed like he willingly traded it. Yeah. Look up that word stealing. He was saying that you took advantage of me in a weak situation. I don't think that it was the, really the word stealing. I think that's poor translation. I think it's more that he, um, it was more about him, um, taking, thinking that he was taking it. He took advantage of a weak situation, but here's the thing. We all know Esau didn't want it. Jacob wanted it. Jacob was willing to do whatever it took. He had the heart of a lion. Esau would not have protected it. Esau. Esau, No, it it was worth it. It was worth a hungry belly. Yeah. That's all it was worth to him was was a hungry belly. Yeah. What is this worth to me? And and we move on with Esau, like Esau is, he, he says, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll meet you over in Seir. And you know, we, Brenda and I talked about this. I got hung up on this for a little bit because we, yeah, I love good. that when we're talking that's about, good. you know, we hear, um, we, 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 you should hear hyperlinks to we've come to a mountain. We're not coming yes. to a mountain of Seir. We're not coming to this mountain right. of fear, but we're coming to the Mount Zion. Right. He's calling us to another mountain. And we're yeah. seeing this walked out right now in forest. We see Esau is saying, Hey, yeah, he's going to go to Mount Sarah. Um, the root of that, which the Brenda and I were back and forth today talking about, it. it's really interesting that the root, you know, of this is fear, shivering, the shivering, but Brenda quaking, mm-hmm. it's a quaking, but what else is it? Yeah. It's hairy. <laughs> it's hairy. It's the hairy thing. It's that when you're, when, you know, when your hair stands up on the back of your neck, it's like a, yeah. you know, yeah, on your arms. Mm-hmm. when you get scared, your hair stands up and that's what it's. That's what your hair is for. It's a warning signal. You you know that. That's why you have hair on your body. It's a warning signal. It it stands up when there when something is, you know, it's part of your your it's part of your warning system. Yeah. And yeah. and when you're fearful and that's what the hair stands up when you're scared or it's telling you to be aware. It's telling you that there's something going on and there is something going on. 
Charlie, I love what you said too, before, before we keep going and please, um, I apologize for head cutting your chain of thought, but no, you didn't at all saying that it hit me so hard just now when you said the mountain, you know, mountains are always talking about an experience with God. Mm -hmm. It's always represent the power and the might of God. Whenever we think of a mountain, think about the mountain. What happened at the mountain? He meets his people at the mountain. There's always a, cha a, a change at the mountain. When we go to the mountain, that's where we meet God. Yeah. Where he expresses himself. That's where he reveals himself. That's where he speaks to us. That's where we hear the rumbling and the shaking and the quaking. And yes, the reverence of God, the fear, the reverence of him. We experience those things at the mountain. Uh, and so just wanted to throw that out. That's but good. It's come up over. And, and speaking of experiencing, for those of you not here live with us, Zoom, one of the good reasons to be live with us is the chat happening. The ladies oh over goodness, here burning it up. And crazy, it's hard. We can't wonderful. keep up. They're so amazing. Yeah, so it's I not know. too late if you're listening on Facebook. Hey, y'all. Um, If you're over on Facebook, come over and join us. If you're listening to the replay. Yeah. We just love you. But if you, yeah, if you're jump on with us, we still will let you in, but um, it's kind of fun to listen. One of the, we we're talking about the letter Tav, which is the covenant for 400. It is the letter. Brenda, do you want to talk about that letter? Do you have, are you up for it? Sure. The letter Tav. Oh my gosh. It is the mark of the covenant. Yeah. Yeah. The letter Tav is the, the that, that place of, well, I don't want to give away too much because I haven't finished the, that's going to be at the last part of the course, but the, um, the Tav is that, is that um, solidifying. It is the, it's like, think of it like this. It's the engraving. It's saying you're mine forever. This covenant is forever. It is never going to end because he will not ever let it end. It is that commitment and it's, and it's beautiful ladies. And so here we have the top yeah. completion. It is not, but it's not complete being done with it's completion. And here we go. And here we go. It's day eight. It's, it's just, it's day eight. Okay. Got it. So it's the completion of this right now, but it's a completion in the sense that now we move into the next round, yeah. right? Now we're moving up into, but the covenant, the top is the is the seal. It's the mark of the covenant. It is, it is that thing that secures you. It is, it's how it's the written thing in his palm of his hand. He's mm. his hand because he's made covenant with us and he will never break that covenant. It's permanent. Oops. I accidentally muted you by trying to let someone in. Sorry. I'm fired. Let me, there you go. Oh, I I'm so fired. I'm on my laptop y'all. So there you go. I'm, I'm not touching anything anymore. This is That's live. It. I love it. And we're live. Um, we're live. <laughs> I wrote down, I wrote some notes down that, you know, about him not having any intentions of going with him into the camp. And I really, my heart was out. I'm thinking, how many things have I done with, for my family that I was been like, Oh no, that's fine. Thank you. You know, and let them go and no, yeah, yeah. We'll meet you. And then we're like, no, we can't go there. Um, he ends up going to, first of all, they set up camp in Sukkot, which the root of Sukkot is Sakak or yeah, Sukkot, to make a hedge, to weave a protection, to cover. We know that we just got through with Sukkot, you know, we've, so the first place he goes after all of this is going is Sukkot. He sends, he takes them and they set up camp. He weaves a protection around them. I think that's beautiful. I beautiful. That's the first place. And then he didn't want his family mingling. Uh, so he goes to uh, Shalem. Oh, wait, we know that the root Shalom, um, it's H7999 to be complete, to be sound, mm -hmm. to be safe, to be free from fault. I believe that this was such a beautiful story of redemption and finality. Yes. Ladies, he's calling us to forgive. Amen. He's calling us to forgive. And when we see forgiveness brings shalom, it brings this shalom, right? It brings that completion. It, it repairs fractures. It brings a wholeness yes. and a safety yes. to our minds. Um, it does not mean forgiveness. He doesn't ever say you must forget. He does call us tell we need to forgive, right? So that yeah. we can be forgiven. It's so that we let things go. We don't hold them accountable because it's his, he's the judge. We don't hold them accountable. It doesn't mean we have to invite him to Thanksgiving. It just means that we let things go. 
I just would ask that you spend some time in his presence uh, today, tomorrow, Saturday, asking about forgiveness, because I do believe that's a big theme. One of the overriding themes is, is forgiveness. We see Esau. Esau was like, what? I mean, he's so in his flesh. He probably forgot already. He was like, what? Whatever, you know. <laughs> hey, one thing I forgot to one thing I forgot to tell you too, the thinking, thinking this through is um, we were talking about the 400s, the 400s, the 400s, the 400, this 400. Tav, the number for Tav is 400. Just throwing that out. Yeah, that's why I said, yeah, I had said, what's the yeah. 400 word is Tav? And I jumped you tough, in. Thank yeah. you for that. Yeah. Um, then he moves on, they move on to they L is Israel's God is the name is the, where they make the altar, not the Hittite gods. So he's like saying, you know, what? Right. we can't follow this. It's not the Hittite gods. And then they move on and we we're there, they're camping in Shechem. And here we go. Why is this even in here? Why is this whole thing with Dina's shenanigans even in here? I think women, I'm really blessed that this is in here yes. because I think there's a lot to be said that's in here. Um, yeah. Um, Brenda, anything you want to say about this uh, with Dina? Well, yeah, there's a, an, uh, I'm trying to find a, where is, okay, 34. Okay. So we're in, we're in chapter 34 of Genesis. Yeah. If you're following along. Yes. <laughs> we're kind of going in order. <laughs> <laughs> we're a little bit, a little bit in order. So the thing with, with Dina, um, and I really have a, um, a connection with this. I have a connection with this, but the thing with Dina was that uh, when this happened to her, the purpose, the the per, the the plan and purpose for her life, right? The plan and purpose, the goal, the intent of her life was fractured because she was uh, she was taken outside of the plan and purpose of what she was created to fulfill. So the, the breaking her, the, the rape of Dina uh, was a fracturing of her identity. And it was a, and I think ladies, I think that we all can relate with this in some ways um, in, in a lot of ways, but the fracturing part um, because when that happens, um, a vessel that is fractured is no longer able to fulfill its purpose. It has to be fixed. And this is one of the things that we had a chance to talk a little tiny bit about at the conference this past weekend was, was the healing touch of the Holy One himself, Rafa. What does that mean? It means to mend, to mend, to sew together, to take the fractured pieces and put them together in such a way that they are better than new, that they are restored to, to, to beautiful, holy perfection, truly. And with Dina, what we see in here is that her future was fractured. It wasn't just that she was, you know, taken away. It was that her hope of her future in in relationship to the the um, nations was fractured. Yeah, I mean that that's a tough one. That is tough. And and, and one one of the things we learned, I love it, but her value did not change. No, and because a lot of us feel like, oh well, I've I've messed up too far. Like, did she mess yeah. up too far? We'll hear. We'll we'll talk about some midrash about that. I'll just keep, well, why not? Because we'll keep it fun. Keep you guys, you know, whatever. Um, but I'm hearing. I remember at the conference, uh, one of the uh, Dr. Deb's daughter, Vicky, did a really great demonstration using a twenty dollar bill, and she held it up and she said, "How much is this worth? Twenty dollars. Twenty bucks. She folded it in half. How much is this now worth?" still $20. Uh, she folded it again. How much is this worth? Still 20 bucks. Then she threw it on the ground and stomped all over it. And then she now picked how it back much up. Is it worth? Yeah. And now how much is it worth? And we're like 20 bucks. 20 and bucks. then she wadded it all up and then said, now how much is it worth? We're like 20 bucks. Now, you know, with this, you could also tear it in half. You could tape it back together. How much would it be worth? 20 bucks. You could still buy whatever you could buy, which it's still worth 20 bucks. You could even, it could be faded out. Parts of corners could be off of it. It can be so you hardly recognizable. You know what you can do? You can take it to the bank and they'll give you a new one. 
Right. I heard him saying like, old things are passed away and behold, all things are new, right? Yes. You still, no matter what Dina is, her story is not over. Oh, but because what God happens? Who he is. Yes. And there's it's still the redemption. Promise. There is still yes. redemption. Yes. And if no matter what's happened in your life, some things you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. We know Dina s- straight outside of the safety net. Yeah. The safety net of her home and her brothers right. and her father. She right. went out looking for friends. Yeah. Have you done that? Have you have you been hanging around friends that were maybe you were young, maybe you were old? Uh, then you started looking for you were hanging around people who had a different influence on you. And it changed, it could be they were so religious. You could have been in, in, it could even have been in church. It didn't necessarily mean that they took you to like the bars or anything and that you got in trouble. It could right. be, you were looking for these, what happened is these, doesn't say these girls were bad. They were just, she, she walked out. She was, went to be with the girls of the city because they, you know, who knows it's there's Midrash that says that uh, Shechem, the son um, sent him out there to coax her out. You know, there's all these funny, you know, we could read fun stories. We don't know. We don't know. These are all stories. But the bottom line is this, she wasn't where she was supposed to be. And so she was listening to that. And what happened is because she was there, she was outside of the protection. So exactly. How many times have we done that? How many times have we walked outside the protection? Yeah, there is, there is, there is protection staying within the frame, the frame, the eight, the het, the, the frame that keeps you inside that place of safety. There truly is. I don't know who's writing that. I, I know that. that there's a, is this Kim writing this? Cause I read this whole thing too about the, no, that was Jen. Oh yeah. She was well, last I'm not going to go into that, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there was, there is a lot, there's a lot being said about how she was, her gender was actually changed. It was, there's a lot of midrash about her as a, I won't even, I, I just threw that out there. I have to explain just that Leah prayed that her gender would, would be changed so that the children would be equal. Like she wanted to make sure that there was no animosity. I mean, there was a lot, there's a lot of stories. You guys can read a lot of stories. You can read a lot of stories yeah. about this and we yeah. go in and read them because I feel like it helps us ask questions. It doesn't mean that you're like, well, yeah. you're not adding, we're not adding to or taking away what we're trying to say no. is what are, what are some of the things that maybe we don't know? And, and because again, this is a Hebrew book written to Hebrew people. Right. And so there might be things we don't understand. So when we go in to find it the background, sometimes you can read some fun stories, but I just know that her value didn't change. One of the stories was very interesting is that she actually, um, um, there is a midrash that she actually, that, that Dina actually conceived from this rape, from this, this union and yeah. that her, her, she had a daughter and they named her Asenath. And she ended up having, she was into sending, sent the baby away, the little girl away to Egypt. And guess where she ended up working in Potiphar's house. And that's who <laughs> Joseph ended up marrying. That's a tale. Not sure if it's true. I'm just saying backstory says that she is, um, uh, oh gosh. Yes. Kim, your, your input is super valued. Um, yeah, we, she, that's the backstory is that Dina actually conceived a child with her union with Shechem and the daughter was named Asenath. And uh, it's a really interesting story. Wouldn't that be cool? Because it ends up being where the, the, it's a redemption of that line. I think, wouldn't that be cool? I don't know if it's true, but it sure would be cool. And it's, and, and well-known rabbis back that all up. So that, that was actually what had happened. Um, um, and, and then she, we know that she ends up marrying, um, Joseph ends up marrying her. And then he has Manasseh and Ephraim with her. Right. And here yeah. we have, these are two more. And then it's redeeming. It's redeeming the rest of that. The tri- we see the twelve tribes. I mean, kind of cool. Come on, yeah. Yes, exactly, exactly. That's so beautiful. Yeah. Because, oh, there's always there's there's always a redemption for the bloodlines. That's what the holy ones after all the way through with the nations. Yeah, the redemption of the bloodlines and through the the nation of Israel. He's bringing this blessing to all the peoples of the earth, all the peoples of the earth. I love that story because it really does show redemption, Charlie. You know, yeah. I love that. I love that, that th- thought of that, 
you know? Yeah. 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 So So lots of fun things again, happening over in the chat and, and, and we have such great, great input. And it's really fun to know all these (laughs) things. Some things is hard. It's hard because we don't have time to unpack all of it for you. So if I say like, Oh, I can't, I can't go there. It's not because I don't want you guys chatting about it. It's because there's a lot, we can't, we, we can't open up everything and then settle it, you know, but, uh, we do have an after party. So all those who stay, it's kind of fun that we get to go through the chat and really break some stuff in midrash together. Love, love, love that. And um, yeah, so, you know, I, I made a note about modesty um, because it comes up from time to time, you know, and I don't think mm-hmm. that there was a question necessarily of Dina's modesty. That's, we're not told that, but we do have a thing. And, and I just wrote a note to myself about modesty. And I put, does what I'm wearing or what I'm doing make people think more about me or does it make them think about God? And I think, that's if you have young girls, it's okay to stand in front of the mirror and be like, because I I had a really good talk with my daughter about this today. We are not, I think we put too much emphasis on, you know, our bodies, our looks or our attractions and all those things. And I mean, I just feel like that is a, I just feel like it's a wrong, we need to focus more on the things of being of the character and integrity and, and having, um, the confidence in who, who and whose we are. And if we really instill those things in us, we're going to walk in modesty. We're going to walk in those things because we're going to value who we were created to be. I don't know that, or do do I think that Dina's issue was that I really do. Otherwise we would have been told she was raped. It would have been that she was, you know, she was part of it, but it doesn't, we're not given that 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 I can read in English or things I've seen in Hebrew. I can't see where we're even given a slight inclination of any kind that she was only thing that was wrong is that she went out, you know, she was out seeking the friendship of the city girls. Right. Like, what does that mean? I don't know what that means. Right. There's lot, there's lots of, you know, back background that, that, that was, um, that was uh, something that did happen during that time was that if, if someone wanted uh, to join with another clan, that, that, that was, that it was acceptable. It wasn't acceptable, but that was some, one of the things that happened. So they would yeah. go- and then they would pay the price and they would pay a big price, but, but then they would also have the benefit of now joining with this other clan tribe, you know, whatever to, um, to get their land bigger, have more people, have better resources. It was all, it was all those things, but yeah, we see, we see Rachel, we see Rachel's death here. Um, oh gosh. Yeah. We'll hear about Rachel again. I think that um, we'll see Jacob re- revisiting this with his when in with Joseph later on in, in Genesis. We're going to see it brought back up again. And he says it, it's, it comes to the it, in Hebrew. The way that it sounds is that he makes it sounds like it's his fault because um, it's thought that because you know remember when when uh, when they had the the um, idols and he was saying who has the idols and whoever it is they should die. That he felt right. like he cursed, he cursed, um, he cursed Rachel because she was the one hiding the idols. Remember in her seat, she was sitting on them and said she was in on her period. And so they wouldn't touch her for that reason. Um, so no, no, they, or nor would they touch anything she was sitting on. Um, those Levitical laws aren't brand new. Just saying, um, they wouldn't, they wouldn't touch any of those. What? Things. <laughs> And so I think that, um, he kind of felt responsible that like he had cursed her and that that had happened. Um, but it's beautiful the way that she, you know, she ends up giving the birth to Ben, Ben, of course, Benjamin, which he changes the name. Cause that's not, she did not want to call him that. And I'm glad he changed. I'm glad he changed the name. Yes. I really am. I'm glad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And just prior to that, Charlie, just prior to that, um, Devora. Uh, in verse eight, she, uh, it's listed that she dies. And it's one of those things like, why? That was one of my wives. Like, why, why, why? What? That just came out of nowhere. Why is she even listed on here? And why with a, a, a Parsha that is talking about all of this that's going on? I mean, this is, this is tremendous what's happening here. Why is her death mentioned? Um, and so I reminded myself because I forget very easily <laughs> from my, a little bit about Deborah and uh, Devorah. And the neat thing is that she's the one that that breastfed Esau and Jacob. She was the wet nurse. The wet nurse. Mm-hmm. She came with Rebecca when as the bridal price. 
She was part of the bridal price. She came with Rebecca as her, as the nursemaid for the for all the children, and 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 she had two, right? Esau and Jacob, and so those babies were her babies too. You know what I mean? So there was a there was a lot going on there emotionally too. And what does Deborah represent prophetically? Well, you know, Charlie, this is so close to this is this is your jam because it's 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 the whole thing of your name. Yeah. It's a really beautiful, like a lot of people don't know just in that name. Um, for those of you that just a long story quick, um, there was a season when I was like, father, what do you call me? And I know last year we kind of dug this up and a lot of us are like, Oh, I want to know what my name means. But I started mm -hmm. praying, father, what do you call me? What do you call me? And mm -hmm. so I was born Melissa Charlene Vaughn was my name. And then we ended up, I ended up, um, legally changing my name a few years ago. And, and, but I, there, during a process of identity crisis and all the things happening, I was like, father, what do you call me? What do you call me? Mm -hmm. And Brenda calls me. I didn't tell anybody I was praying this. Brenda calls me a few weeks later and she said, the weirdest thing happened. I just, this name was scrolling across in Hebrew across the front of my eyes. And I was like, what, what is this? And so she goes, and I feel like, oh, I have to tell you this in the name. And she said, it's Deborah. And it was D apostrophe B O R A H. And, and then she wrote it out in Hebrew and then a little, a couple it's been, it was a few years later. Um, we were sitting down with uh, Bill Bullock and I was like, Hey, could you do me a favor? What does this mean? And he was like, well, you know, it's the picture of a bee. Well, it's interesting because Melissa, my, my birth name also means the same thing means bee. And he goes, but it's not that it's Hebrew. So it's a, it's, it's not a bee, like, Oh, a bee, honey bee. It's what a bee does. And he said, it's vibrates with its vocal cords. It vibrates the atmosphere and it draws out the goodness from flowers or plants. And then it feeds and then uses that to feed, to feed the colony or to feed people. And so it was like, Words. Mm -hmm. it was like, per, it was like, okay, of course you, that's what you're going to say, father. So I love that for her is like, that was her job was to feed. Yeah. These, yeah. Yeah. That was her job. Is, is that so? Is that so beautiful? And in Hebrew, uh, the Devora, in uh, if you take the letters in Hebrew and you and you and you write them out and you look at the meaning of those letters, it's talking about a portal or an entrance into the next realm, right into the kingdom, and it's releasing of of the revelation of that kingdom so it's a releasing of the revelation of the kingdom and the doubt the dalit the first letter the d letter dalit in hebrew it, it is um, an entrance into a portal it's taking you from one place to the next it's taking you into another that's good yeah uh, and and the last letter hey is revelation and it's it's taking you into that place where the revelation is released and that's what the the name devora is a, it's it's the name of a prophetess it's it's bringing forth the word of god that is releasing life and feeding the people it's bringing revelation to the people to change them to stir them up yeah free that's what's happening and so she her death is significant you know, the Torah never wastes words, never wastes space. It's very limited on its, its real estate. <laughs> it's a very small book. <laughs> and yeah. when something is in there, it's okay for us to say, that's kind of weird that that's just right there in the middle of it. But there's these beautiful, beautiful hidden treasures in there. So just, just so that you know that even in the midst of all the hardship that Esau and Jacob went through and all of those things, right? There was a woman who was speaking forth life and revelation to them along with his mother, supporting the mother, supporting the father, right? Right. You love that you and I can be those women who are speaking life and revelation to other women in the midst of the things that are hard for them, that we can actually be divorced because it, it means words. It means that which comes forth from the mouth, which is the word of God. And um, I, 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 I look, I'm looking at the words. I'm like, I was looking, as you said, I was like the Dalit, the bait, 
the re, mm -hmm. we have the resh, the and then we have the hey, mm -hmm. right? So I'm like, and then we have this, hey. we're back mm -hmm. to the humility where, you know, we have this, yes. we're seeing the story in her name. We're seeing the story of yes. Jake, Jacob yeah. having to like come to a place of humility. He went through a portal where he, he's, you know, he sees a portal right. before, and yeah. now he's going through this portal to, and he builds the house. We see him start building, going through this process of setting up. Uh, we, we see the rededication of Beth L and he's bringing exactly. and the revelation is coming to the mm -hmm. peace is the people. Right. And we're going to start seeing mm -hmm. them understanding who they are. As we continue on, we're going to see yeah. this, these people understanding who they forgetting who they are and then remembering who they are, but it always has right. to come through. It has to come through that person who's willing to come through that door bowed and, and humble, you know? Humble yes. thyself in the sight of the Lord, yes. and then He will lift you up. Right? Yeah. And that resh is the 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 resh is the head or the king off the throne, which is humility, which is coming off of the throne, being outside of your space where you're ruling, still being who you are, but being removed from that you know that place where you're ruling and yes. and being among the people, and that's that's what this is. And I just. I just, uh, I just trust that, that ladies, that those of you that are listening are going to get that in your spirit right now. How are you to be a wet nurse? How are you to be one who is giving forth life, giving forth nurturing, nurturing in the midst of everything that's going on in this crazy world right now? You, we are called to be those that come up alongside of other mothers and we assist them by helping to speak life and revelation and hope and healing. This is yes. what we get to do. And she, and she you nurtured know? both of them. She didn't just pick both one of them. Hand. No, oh, because she, she, already, she would have known, she would have known. Yeah. I'm sure Rebecca yeah. would have told her, this is, you know, this is what God said. This is who's going to serve who. So she didn't like, she served, she, she served both of them and there's things yes, in our lives. Did. I'm thinking about the whole, not way we need to pull. We don't know the wheats and the tares. And we are, we get to, wow. we get to nurture things around us. And if we're just bringing life yeah. in every situation, you know, it is, again, it's not yeah. an accident that her name is, is we're, we're talking about her today. Thousands right. of years later, we're talking about her today and the impact today. that she made on these two men. There were two nations, yeah. you know, we see Esau interesting that Esau, you know, he fathers all of the, the Edomites. Um, I, I was counting through, you know, he has 11 tribe leaders coming from his lineage, right? This is a stretch, but I'm like, it's interesting. Why 11? And then you have Jacob 12. I mean, is, is it because Israel has 12 tribes and I'm glad that Esau didn't have the equal 12. So there's no, there's no question of where the tribes are supposed to come from. There'll be no question mark later. Well, were these really supposed to be the 12 tribes? And I mean, I mean, can see it now. Well, these are the really the lost tribes and these are really, we can see it as a whole nother denomination, but that there's no question of, of who birthed and who from whose loins we have 12 Kings come out of, as opposed to these 11 Kings that come out. And I actually wrote all of them down and I started doing a study and I won't go over those with you, but it was very interesting to go through the study of each, go through the study. I mean, it's, there's not an accident that each one of these are named. There's not an accident. We need to know them because we're going to end up coming back to them. We're going to end up coming back yeah. to, we're going to end up coming back and you're going to hear about things happening. And he's, he's telling us so that we don't know, we remember, Oh, that's Esau's son or grandson, or that's what's mm -hmm. happening here. Like we heard, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to hear those things. Like I, like I said before, you can look right. through and it's in the Apocrypha. It is lost books that were not included at the, at the round table. They didn't get included into the Bible that we have in our hands, but there was that, that Job was actually uh, that Dina ends up marrying Job and then they end up having more children. And that was a restoring that line. It was coming back and bringing wellness to that. Uh, Kim says she, uh, that Devorah was the nursemaid is point to the, De the Deborah 500 years lady that encouraged the judges to push through the 900 chariots of fear from Hatzor, the heads of the kingdoms. Amen. Yes, Kim. Amen. Yeah, Kim, thank you so much for that. Appreciate yeah. it. Hey, real quick shout out to Michelle. First time here with us, Michelle. Blessings. Hi, Michelle. Blessings. <clears throat> Hello, blessings, blessings. Oh, wow, we have, we have so much to cover quick. <laughs> oh, Steph, yeah. can I just say, ladies, <laughs> we're 
we're praying for, you know, we all are praying for those that we love that are um, maybe not um, walking in the fullness of what the Holy One has for them right now, right? You all know what I'm talking about. Um, and Rachel is crying out, right? Rachel is on the way. She doesn't, she doesn't get buried in the cave with, with Leah and, and, uh, and Israel, Yaakov. She's buried on the way, on the side of the road, right? On the way. And um, the word says throughout, there's several different scriptures that talk about how she is the one that's crying out for her children. You can't console her because she's crying out for her children, right? Well, to me, that reminds me that in that when we cry out, not only for our own children, but for all the children, you know, we're crying for the nations to come back. You realize that even with Esau, it's not the Israel is not the only one. Israel is the nation that God chose to be the light to the world. But he is after every soul, every son, every daughter. And that's how that's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be crying out for every son. Yes. Every daughter, not just our own. I was wondering if that was a premonition, Brenda, is wasn't she born outside of Bethlehem and just outside of Bethlehem? And isn't that interesting that, you know, we do know that all the, the boys were being killed at a time. Was she crying out for those? No. Was that prophetic that she was crying yeah, out for I all the babies, the babies that all would have been under babies. two that were killed? Yeah. All those babies that would have been born would have been from her lineage. I mean, it would have been coming from, from were they from her lineage? No. They didn't come from Benjamin. Did they come from Benjamin? Someone help me. Joseph They're all coming from Benjamin. Judah. Who who did Joseph no, was Benjamin? That was no? Leah. But all these children, it doesn't matter. They're all these children of Israel. There's, there is all yeah. the Israelites are, are all outside of Bethlehem. We know all they were all the Israelite children. So it would have been all of them. But if some of her children, some yeah. of her great, great, great grandchildren would have been being killed. And so I'm wondering, you know, is that it's happening? And it, I, I read something and this is how about a day for all of us just to throw everything out there. I read something random, random fact was that one of the reasons that uh, Rashi says that one of the reasons that uh, Jacob cried, it says he wept. Um, it was his weep, his weeping. When you go back and look, there's, there's other times that same, the other time that that's used, it was when Esau wept because he had lost his, his birthright. The same is the way that he wept. It was because he's lost something. And so when we see that, uh, we see Jacob, when he sees, uh, uh, Rebecca, I mean, Rachel at the wet, when he sees Rachel and he says he weeps, it was one that he didn't have anything to give her. The other was is is thought here's another story. Y'all is that he had a premonition that they would not be married. They would not be buried together that there would be an issue that they would not be buried together. And that's a big deal, y'all. I mean, when people are not at the time when you're not there, they're all there. Look, we can see later that we'll see Jacob says, take my bones and put my bones. We know that Leah, she's, she's buried with him. Her bones are in the same cave. They're all buried together. Yeah. And it was a big deal to be buried. And it's kind of, it was a shame. Again, remember when Abraham, when Abraham, remember when he, he buys this cave at Hebron, it's because they felt that it was an entrance into the garden, that there was a, it was right. a secret entrance and they wanted to be as close as they could during right. for the resurrection, that their bones would be as close. They wanted to be the first ones in. And so <laughs> <laughs> that's the reason Jacob says, bury my, bury my bones there. It was a big deal right. for them to all be there. Was a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, did I say Rebecca when I was meant to say Rachel, if I did, uh, please forgive me. I apologize. It you was guys, the R, it was the R girl. Correct me. It was, it was. Yeah. The, I'm sure we, we, I did we can too. all auto correct me. Keep okay. up guys. We don't know. Yeah, right. Um, okay. So then, so then Charlie, we go into that part that really nailed you this weekend, this week is when, when, uh, Yaakov Israel, uh, gets to be face to face with his father. Whew. Yeah. Right. We passed that already. Did we? Like, who am I? Oh yeah, we did because we talked about the Edomites and everything. So we did, but we just didn't, we just didn't mention that. Part yeah. Yet. In 35, it comes on and he returns to see Isaac. It says, and then it's in 35, 27. It says, then Jacob came to his father, Isaac, 
um, at Hebron where Avraham and Isaac had stayed. And now Isaac's days were 180. And then Isaac breathed his last and died and was gathered to his people old and full of days. So his sons, Esau and Yaakov buried him. So again, Esau. again, the brothers come together. Mm-hmm. Again. Remember with Joseph, with, um, we see Ish, we see Ishmael come together Ishmael. with yeah. Isaac. They come to bury Isaac. Abraham. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Cool. It's, it's, There's again, something I'm, I'm, there. There's something there. They come together. Brothers. I mean, it's, this is a huge overwhelming. I, I thought the two things I saw in this was, um, one was the, the importance of forgiveness. Um, and, you and, and we talked about this, Brenda, you and I were get, like whispering back and forth during the conference being like bad girls, but we're talking about, you know, when some we're told to forgive 70 times seven. And I said something to you, like, what does that mean? Does that mean until it's fruitful until it's complete? And I thought, no, no. And I kept praying about it. I was like, no, no, until it's complete, until it's complete, until the forgiveness is complete. And I was like, father, what if I've been thinking about that since we talked about that this weekend is when I'm forgiving, what does that look like? It means that means when I can walk into a room and that person's in that room and I don't have a, I don't have to act weird. I don't feel funny. I can bless them. I don't necessarily have to stand next to them and be their best friend, but I could bless them. And I'm like, I could literally it's complete to where I can bless my enemy. I could bless the person. I could bless someone who has cursed me. I can truly bless. And I've had opportunity this week to, to walk that out where I was able to, and there was no weird sting. It was like, I could bless somebody who hurt my feelings before, or maybe even cursed me. I can say, father, bless them really, really bless them. And, and, you know, and, right. Lori says 70 times seven meant <laughs> infinity. I mean, but mm-hmm. seven, you know, seven is completion. You know, it's really, it's just, it's a continual, right. It's a continual, but yes. we see that number seven is completion and we see it as when, and I'm thinking, father, I want things in my life to be fruitful. And I, it, you know, unforgiveness is not fruitful. It's not fruitful. And it also keeps me, it's not just the forgive so that I can be forgiven. It's that forgive. So I can run and jump into his lap and not feel like there's something in the way. And I don't know about you guys. And I've, I've talked about this before, but you know, how when you're in an argument, like with your husband or with your kids or something, and then you go to, you go to a worship service or you turn worship music and you're all like, you just can't, it's just hard. It's just hard. <laughs> Unforgiveness. It's, it's, you know, we can tell you all the little things like, oh, it's drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Yeah. It's all those things, but you know what more importantly yeah. it is, it keeps you from being able to run ascend. It keeps you from being able to run into his presence and, and receive right. the fullness of what he has. Yeah. Because it there's something the approach. Yeah, yeah. It breaks the approach. Yeah. It really does. Charlie, that's so good. And, and, and the thing is, it was that part of Jacob with that, was that Yaakov with that Israel, he became Israel when he was able to break that so that he could approach, he could finally get to that place where he, he had to wrestle. Um, I mean, I'm going to go back to that wrestling, mm, man, I've wrestled with myself. I have wrestled because I didn't want to forgive someone if I'm honest, mm-hmm. because I didn't know it was too vulnerable to forgive. Yeah. We've all been there, right? It was just too vulnerable to really forgive. Who and then and then my other thing was just the whole, the whole thing. <laughs> my other part was just about with with Dina was I I've, I've been I've looked I've been, looked for friendships and all the I mean some of my craziest uh, wilderness experiences was because I uh, was spending time with girls I was working with instead of women in my fellowship or. Uh, back in the day, you know, when I was going through my divorce, I was spending time with women from work. So I was in more influenced by what they were doing. And I allowed, and I did things or I made choices that I might, I would not have done had I stayed around, uh, circled myself and stayed in the, even my own home, I needed to stay at home, but you know, we're going to go out and can't beat them, join them. I mean, have, has that happened to anyone here? Has anyone had like, when you got outside that protective zone, you know, he, he, we know he never leaves us, you know, nothing can separate us from him, but I know that there's things when he's just like, oh, girl, like, don't, don't go there. Sorry. I muted you again, trying to let someone in. I we're fighting. I'm, I'm letting him in and you let him in already. Oh, you're so good. 
Thank you, Brenda. Uh, that's my job, sis. You're awesome. So yeah, that was you know, my, I that love was my that. I love that. And that's, that's we very raped. vulnerable. We get raped of our destiny. Yeah, that's right. And then, and then we, and then we are fractured. And so then we fracture others because we pour out from brokenness, right? And what does he want us to do? He wants us to be restored. So that's his plan for our lives. So ladies, that's happened to you. It's never too late. If you are, are you, if you're feeling like you're fractured, if you're feeling like you are outside of where you need to be, if you're feeling like you're allowing influences to come into your life that are taking you outside of the, the framework of blessing, because remember that when we walk outside that framework, we're walking outside of the blessing. We'll yeah. walk away from the blessing. And it's our choice to do that. Mm-hmm. But we want, this is the eights. Remember the eights, the chet, the frame. It's the frame. It's that hoopa. It's that place where you go in and you're learning. It's that safe place. That's where we want to stay. And that's what his word is, that safe place. And, um, and, and surround yourself with people who are going to be encouraging your walk. Uh, it doesn't mean that you can't be friends with people outside of that. Please don't get me wrong. But the people that are influencing you, the people that you are allowing to speak into your life and bring counsel to you and bring wisdom to you, you need to be surrounding yourself with people who have the same like mind, like goal, the same destiny, the same, the same um, motivation that you have. Um, otherwise, you're going to be getting influence. It's going to take you in a different direction, and that's not what you're. That's not what you're after, right? No, no. And I love all the people. You can't be friends with other people. It just means the people that you're getting counsel from, the people that you're getting wisdoms from, the people that are. Uh, speaking into your life. Yeah, that's what you want. And that's, you know, why, why we have this beautiful community. We love it. We're so, we're all so grateful for the community, you know, beautiful. It's wonderful because if you do surround and we, and, and one of the things we love is, is holding each other accountable. Like, where are you? What's going on? And What's going on please, with you? please speak into it. Like, Hey, I haven't seen you in a while. Um, if, if yeah. I don't reach out to you, please. Um, I ask you to forgive me. Um, I do pray if there's someone that needs to, to me to reach out to that the father would lay you on my heart. Um, as you can imagine with, you know, each one of us on our team, there's only one, each one of us trying to reach out to all of you, but could you reach out to each other? Would could you please, you, could you help? That's yeah. how you can help reach out to it. Like, yeah. Hey, I haven't seen you in a while. What are you yeah. doing? Where have you been? Right. Would you notice, would you notice who's missing mm-hmm. and would you reach out to her? Um, yeah. Cause that's one of the worst things. I don't know about you, but I've been in a congregation before where I didn't show up for a while and they didn't even notice. <laughs> didn't even notice. Yep. Been there. <laughs> oh, and I don't want you all. I don't want you to feel that way. And, and, and I also, then I'm going to flip that if you're struggling and, and that instead of nursing an offense and sitting back in the background and saying, nobody's noticing, call us out and say, Hey, you guys didn't even notice I've been gone for four weeks where you been, you know, please just be like, Hey, or, or who, if we didn't notice, be like, you should have, ca- then why didn't you ca- tell us week one that you're struggling? You, you, we're going to ask you to be responsible right. too, to get a hold of us and say, I'm struggling. Mm-hmm. This is what's going on right. and, and right. connect with one another. And I'm we're, that. So you have, that's what you guys are here for each other. So you don't have to worry mm-hmm. about being, uh, violated or, or your, right. nothing has to be stolen from you mm-hmm. because you were outside the camp. You know, we're going to talk about being outside the camp in a good way. And, you know, when God's restoring you, but there's a difference when, when you're being distracted by other things. And even if it's your own offenses or your own hurts, don't be distracted by that. Please, please just, you know, be vulnerable and say, Hey, this yeah. is what's happening. Um, yeah. Yeah, pay attention to me. Please. please. Yeah. 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 That's really good. Jen just um, offered for all of you to contact her. So. <laughs> Right. Everyone, Jen Doobie. <laughs> Jen Doobie. Get her. <laughs> Jen, J E N N dot the rooted cafe, K A F E at gmail.com. That's how you can there reach you Jen. That That's is right. her rooted cafe email, but also on here. And I know she means it. She really means it. She's there. Um, yeah, she means it. She really she does. does. 
And we really, you know what, you guys, we're here. I mean, you can reach out to us. We might not be reaching out to every single one of you as often as we would love to really, really. Please don't put that expectation on us. We're, we're, we, we really love you though. And so please reach out to us and then that way we can connect. Okay. Yeah. So, we'll connect you. We yeah. love you. Connect you. Yeah. We want you to be with, there's a lot of women here who um, love, love, love connecting. So, and a lot of wise, we have a lot of wise women. We have a lot of really, really put me to shame. They like, wise, you know. wise women here that can, that can really love on you and, and, uh, you know, speak. yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're going to, let's end aunties. out with, we have a lot of aunties. We have a lot of aunties. <laughs> let's end out this realizing that we see the Esau in 36. It says, so Esau lived in Mount Sarah. Remember Mount Sarah is, is, uh, we're going to see that come up again when the children are in the wilderness, right? Yeah. We're going to see them run around right. this mountain and Mount Sarah yeah. is this mountain of fear. We're going to see yeah. that he goes to this place that he lives in a, it's not, that's not where he's going. Let's be like Israel. Let's go to the Mount. Let's go to Mount Zion. Let's, let's let that yes. be the place we choose to encamp. Let's make yeah. it be the place we choose to spend our time is in his presence. Not a, this is a season. This is a time in history when there can be mm-hmm. a lot of fear, confusion, things that make the hair right. on your neck. <laughs> stand up yep. offense, exactly. anger, frustration, right. all those things on that rock. Yeah. Just choose your mountain, choose life. Yeah. Don't, don't That's serve right. that mountain. You don't need to. He's, you can just boldly jump to Mount Zion, spend time yeah. with him, be in his presence, release mm-hmm. the fear, release the offense, yeah. release all the things. Just want to encourage you for that. But yeah. you want to close and, us and in prayer? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Who I was just going to say, and, and that's why we're asking you to reach out to one another because don't do this alone. This is not, not to be done alone. You need to have other people that are linking their arms with you. And, um, and this is a great community of people that can do that. So please, please honor, honor, honor us. You know, I, I was, I was studying this week and I, I ran across something that said that when you, when you give the receiver that is the person when you're giving it it's not just that you're giving to the receiver the receiver is allowing you to give that's a blessing in and of itself if you will let us know that you need somebody to reach out to you then you are blessing that person that gets to reach out to you you are allowing them to operate in the gifts and the calling that they have in their life, please do that. That's generosity. Okay. We have to all learn to be good receivers. Okay. And so please do that. And you want, who, who, who did you ask? You, you pray. Oh, Abba. Thank you so much for this time that we've had together. Thank you so much for the opportunity and this technology. We're so grateful that we are able to, to just be with one another right now. Father, will you meet every need? I, I just thank yes. you are yes. reaching into the hearts of those, those that are lonely, those that are wounded, those that are fractured. Father, those who have thought nobody would understand, you are reaching out to them right now and pouring out your life to them. And I thank you for that. Will you bless them? Will you join them with others that can encourage them, that they can encourage? Will you build our friendships here? Thank you so much for that. And Father, we thank you for your word. Will you allow this word to change us who we are? Will you allow this word to renew our minds and renew our hearts? Will you cause us today to say, I choose you. I choose you. I choose you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. We pray your blessing of healing, restoration, forgiveness. We pray for those, Father, that are struggling right now with their health. We ask for strength, Lord God. We ask that their names would be before you right now and that you would see to it. Everything that needs to be done, we trust that you will do. We trust you. We thank you. Our hearts are filled with gratitude. And we bring blessing to you now. Amen. And we love you guys.
<laughs> Look at what you've got. Look what I got. Hi. Hi. <laughs> See, Auntie Brenda, she's saying hi. This is my hi. Eliza. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? Hi. You guys be Aww. blessed. I am not able to stay for the after party. As you can see, I have. I can't either. Got littles. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm going to see my son for about 10 minutes and then and I'm not going to see him for months. So I need to go say hello to him. He just got in from work. So I'm so sorry, ladies. Um, we love you so much, though. We love, 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 and, love you. And, does someone want to stay on and do the after party, Charlie, or I don't know if anyone is raise your hand or say, yes, I want to stay and we'll make you host and we can leave. It doesn't mean y'all can't stay in chat. Let me stop the recording. Mm -hmm.